One of the RNLI's most powerful ocean-going craft is based in the North Sea off the remote Spurn Point on the Humber Estuary in Yorkshire. RNLI Humber, Dave Steenvorden. You've got it. It was late afternoon when coxswain Dave Steenvorden received an urgent call. A yacht called the Molly Louise was in difficulties in the North Sea. The weather was calm at Spurn Point, but a storm was brewing further out to sea. The Humber crew were heading towards a rescue which would put their lives at risk. The Molly Louise was racing to reach the safety of her home port at Grimsby as the storm overtook her. A freak wave broke into the cockpit. There were three of us in the cockpit at the time. I turned around to see Rob. I just could see his legs as he went off the boat. Three of the four crew were washed overboard. The Molly Louise was now in serious trouble. The next minute, everything was quiet and very cold, and, and I realised I was underwater. And I just went to the radio and called Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Oh, lifeboat. As we got aboard the lifeboat, we'd heard it had been upgraded to a Mayday and every, everything changes. The Humber lifeboat was still several miles away. My son said, Dad, Dad, don't go, don't go, there's a helicopter. It was soon hovering overhead. An RAF helicopter was first on the scene. It rescued the three men and took them to the nearest hospital. There was no sign of Dan Rawcliffe on the yacht. Molly Louise, Molly Louise, rescue helicopter 128, Channel 16, you read. Someone's come on deck now. I went on deck and felt sure that Rob was uh, drowned by this time. The 74-year-old was in severe shock. It was too dangerous for the helicopter to attempt a rescue. Only the RNLI lifeboat could save him. And then out of the mist and the waves came this uh, rescue boat. But the lifeboat crew now had to risk themselves by bringing their vessel alongside the Molly Louise in 20-foot seas. I knew then it was going to be extremely difficult because the wind and the waves was blowing me onto the yacht. One crew member volunteered to take the dangerous leap from lifeboat to the deck of the yacht. Third attempt coming in, we managed to get Brian across. Try talking to him. He just stared straight through me as if I wasn't there. Sorted then, I want him off. Relief. God, you can't really, you can't honestly know the relief to think, oh, you know, I'm not on my own. Now they had to get down to safety from the stricken yacht. They threw me over and there was willing hands on the other side to pull me over there, right? It wasn't the best of transfers, but he got off board safely. I just went to pieces, I just broke down in tears. I'm struggling now a bit, but yeah, it was very hard and I'm very grateful. Dan was taken to hospital in Grimsby, where he made a full recovery. Dan and Rob have met the Humber crew to thank them for their skill and bravery. Yeah. You keep it. Very yeah. very Come here, Dan. Now, you can't get brave of people right, and they right. dedicate all their lives to saving people. We have never, ever won the war with a seat. If you ever take it for granted, it will get you. And that's why the Honorary exists. It's one of the brightest jewels in this nation's crown. If the RNLI hadn't been on the beach that day, uh, I probably wouldn't be here now. I can't thank the lifeguards enough for saving my family. It doesn't bear thinking about what my future would have been like without them. We're here to do a job. Uh, we're here to you know, help people out, whether it be fishermen, whether it be someone in a little canoe or a sailing board. You know, we're just here to help them and to make sure they're safe. The RNLI saved my life and countless other thousands of lives over the years. The work of the RNLI doesn't stop at the end of the day.
four out of 10 rescues take place at night. Darkness and bad weather can make these shouts even more dangerous for the crews. The round-the-clock rescue service provided by the RNLI is the best in the world. But it's only possible because of you. I think the RNLI is brilliant because if they weren't there, people would drown more often than what they do. It costs over two million pounds a week to run more than 300 lifeboats across the UK and Ireland. Almost every penny of it comes from voluntary donations and legacies. The fundraising is what makes the RNLI work as efficiently as it is. It's, it's the heart and soul and lungs of this organisation. My uncle died in 2006 and funeral donations were in aid of the lifeguard. So I'm supporting something that he's always supported. It's a constant race to raise the money to keep the RNLI crews trained and ready to save lives. They're the backbone of the RNLI, those people that are raising the money to get the frontline guys out there. There are many ways you can help. You can join the front line as a volunteer with your local station. You can make a donation, become a member, or get involved in fundraising activities to help the RNLI keep our waters safe.